welcome to day number four. Welcome to day number seven. Day number 12. Welcome to Do It Heartily. Aloha and welcome back. Before we jump into God's word, let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now. Thank you so much for who you are and what you do for us every single day. Thank you for being a wonderful, loving, merciful Savior. And uh, we just ask that you remove the devil and his distractions at this point. I pray that hearts are tender, minds are focused, and that you would speak through me this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, open up your Bibles to the book of 1 Timothy, chapter number 4. 1 Timothy, chapter number 4. We're going to be looking at verse number 12. It says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Have you ever been told you're too young to do something? Maybe you've been told you're too young to ride a ride, or maybe you've been told you're too young to go along with your older siblings or uh, you're too young to eat from that part of the menu at the restaurant right you know you got the adult menu and then you got the kids menu and things like that and uh, you know we all go through that we've all you know, either you're going through it or uh, older people have gone through it right uh, I remember there were plenty of times I've got older brothers I've got an older sister and there are plenty of times where I was told, oh, sorry, you can't go, you're too young, right? And so here we see the opposite of that. Don't let anybody tell you that you're too young to have a relationship with Christ. You're too young to serve the Lord, right? There's a flip of the switch here. And what's interesting here, you know, most of my audience on uh, my two YouTube channels, uh, Do It Hardly and Do It Hardly Junior, are teenagers or for Do It Hardly Junior, you know, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, you know, that kind of thing. And, and um, you know, eight years old to 12. And, and But what's interesting, even though that's my audience and that's what this verse is talking about, thy youth, right? Don't let anybody tell you you're too young. The title of this book is Timothy. Timothy is the one that's being written to right now we get we still get to learn from this but timothy is the one being written to from paul and paul's in his 30s as of this video being made i'm in my 30s right so you could call me a youth right in that <laughs> so but uh you know i'm sure what paul is talking about you know back then men in their 60s and 70s and 80s they're kind of looking down on Timothy a little bit uh, even though he is a an adult man they're still looking down on his youth now Timothy being in his 30s doesn't mean that this verse can't apply to you as well so again flipping that script don't let anybody say, uh, you know you're only 14 what do you know you're only nine years old. What do you know? Don't let anybody tell you that. You know, you can grow in your relationship with Jesus. You can serve God within your physical capabilities. And, and it says here, uh, it gives a list of ways that you can be that example even in your youth. You can be that example amongst your friends. You can be that good, godly example even to your teachers, uh, to your own family members even, and it could point them to Christ. So it says there, but be thou an example. Notice it doesn't say argue, right? It doesn't say, no, -uh, I'm 10 years old. You can't tell me what to do. It doesn't, don't go in with a bad attitude. Pastor Adam said, you know, I'm 16, but don't let anybody despise my youth. You know, don't don't go in yelling or anything. Then that's when you show your youth. That's when you show your immaturity, right? It's talking about showing, be an example, and be mature in these ways, right? But be that an example. It says of the believers, right? You are showing that you are a believer amongst believers. And it says there, here's how you can be an example. In word. Right? Remember the last video we talked about about how our words should be age appropriate, 
right? And we went through the A, the G, the E, and talking about how our words should edify and show grace and uh, be appropriate and all these different things. And um, you know, what are you what are you saying? What words are coming out of your mouth? Are they being a, a, an example? Watch what you say, right? You shouldn't have uh, foul language coming out of your mouth or filth coming your mouth or, or, or words that tear people down. Then you're not being an example of the believers. Then you are showing your immaturity. You're showing your youth. Uh, the next part there, it says, be, a, uh, of the, be an example of the believers in word. Then it says in conversation. Now, conversation and then word might sound like the same thing, but word is actually the words that you say. Conversation is more the actions that you take, right? Now, you're young. I'm not saying you can't do what young people do, like play video games or play sports or, or have fun in that sense. That's not what I'm talking about, okay? But it is talking about your actions. Do your actions represent someone that is a believer, that is a Christ follower, or do your actions uh, show people that, oh, I, I don't know. I don't know if they're a Christian. You know, I saw them doing this, right? Um, you know, you don't want that to follow you like, oh, you know, boys will be boys or girls will be girls. You know, that kind of, you know, adults looking at you and they see something you do that doesn't represent Christ and they just kind of shake their head and like, ah, they're just a teenager. You know, they're messing stuff up or they're just a kid. They're just messing stuff up. You don't want that kind of reputation. You want your actions. You want adults to look at you and go, oh, wow. Wow. Look at how mature they are. Wow. Look at how they helped in that situation. Look at how uh, they, they really do follow Jesus. You know, that's what it's talking about. So the first one is what you say. The second one is your actions. The next one there is be thou an example in charity. Charity is the other word for love, loving one another, right? You want to, you don't want to be that person in school that's a part of a clique and you ignore other people. You don't want to be that person that you're only loving your friends and that's it. Like, I'm not going to show love to anybody else. Oh, that kid's weird. I don't want to hang out with him or uh, that kid, you know, he's nerdy. I'm not going to mess with him. You know, you want to show love. I'm not saying that you have to be best friends with every single person in your school. It's not what I'm saying at all. But you can be kind. You can show love to everybody that you come in contact with. Be nice to them. Show them a smile. Say hey to everybody. That kind of thing. Show love to everyone. So the first one, is your words the next one's your actions the next one is loving everybody love one another uh be an example in spirit your relationship with jesus is stronger than your relationship with the flesh now i'm not saying you got to go around reading your bible in front of everybody or praying in front of everybody but your relationship with jesus is very evident to everyone like oh wow I can tell. They can just tell. You, and you know what I'm talking about, right? You can just, if you have a conversation with somebody or you're hanging around with somebody long enough, you know, oh, wow, there's no doubt that person has a strong relationship with Jesus. You're not constantly giving in to the flesh. Then the next part there is faith. People know you are a believer. There is no doubt, right? I've been, sadly, I've been to some funerals of some people and I have doubts, like, oh man, I have no idea. I don't know. They could have been a Christian. They could not have been a Christian. We don't know. You don't want people to say that about you. So words, uh, what you watch what you say, your actions, loving one another, your relationship with people, uh, they know your faith, and then lastly, their your purity. People know you are not using your body to sin against God. That's what it's talking about there being purity. You, you want your body and the actions of your body to represent purity, to represent cleanliness. And so make sure that you're doing that. And so that's the way you as a teenager or a kid can show others. You can be an example you can be that example that points people to a new relationship with Christ. You can be that example that points 
someone that's already a Christian to be a stronger Christian. So make sure you're doing that. And you don't have to wait till you're 50 years old, married with kids of your own. You don't have to wait till then. You don't even have to wait till you're my age in your 30s, right? You can do it right now. Let no man despise thy youth. Don't go out and argue with people about what you can do. Show them what you can do for God. All right, we love you. God loves you even more, and aloha.